This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix and Manscaped. More coronavirus news this week, and for the foreseeable future, because unlike what a lot of governors and mayors and Fox News personalities might be telling you, this is far from over. Mm. Here in the U.S., there's still around 25,000 new confirmed cases and 2,500 new deaths per day, and that's with testing and record-keeping still being not great, so the real number is probably a lot higher. The curve, at least on the national level, not flattened. And uh, if this current trend keeps up, we can expect to hit 1 million confirmed cases in the U.S. by around a week from now. We did it, everyone. Yeah, of course, it's a scary time to be alive, especially if you're a male, because for some reason, the majority of COVID-19 deaths have been men. There are some theories about why this might be, like that women's immune systems are just better at fighting viral infections, or that men generally lead less healthy lifestyles. But here's a new theory. Men are prone to longer, more severe cases of coronavirus because it lingers in their testicles. In other words, the virus is stored in the balls. Yeah. I mean, at least that's according to some preliminary research published recently by scientists in New York and Mumbai. So basically, the study says that coronavirus attaches itself to an enzyme known as ACE2 that's present in the lungs, gastrointestinal tract, and heart, but it's also present in the testes, whereas the same is not true for the female reproductive system. And since the testes are apparently pretty cut off from the rest of the body's immune system, the virus can survive down in your nutsack longer than in other parts of your body. That's why I keep my nuts at 140 degrees. Yep. Every night. I, fill <laughs> I the, boil my nuts. I fill the bucket and I dip my nuts. That's, yeah. that's why I've made, uh, managed to be coronavirus free this whole time. Yeah. Now, of course, this is just preliminary research. It hasn't been peer reviewed. So at this point, it's just a theory. But it would be kind of funny if it turned out that balls are the reason that men seem to be dying from this disease way more, despite getting infected at around the same rate as women. That's the reason that old men die is because they have big, long, droopy balls. Yep. The more further room the, to store viruses. The further the balls are from the body, yeah. the less connected to the immune system they are. Got a big old bag of viruses down there. Now, here's my question and the question everyone else is wondering. If you jack off constantly, does that help? Uh, you would think get, you, getting the poison, getting the poison out. out. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I sounds right Honey, to me. You're gonna have to suck the poison out. It's the only way, babe. Babe, I'm full of viruses. You gotta help. Get one of those hot nurses in here that I see on the movies and TV shows. <laughs> babe, <laughs> babe, please. Anyways, another strange coronavirus news that's even more distressing for us personally than the idea of having our balls uh, trying to kill us. If the virus keeps up long enough, there might not be any bubbles in our beer thanks to a potential CO2 shortage. God damn it. And people are driving less while they shelter in place, which is good. A lot of cities that normally have a lot of air pollution have had cleaner air than anyone's seen in years. But less driving means less gasoline production. And less gasoline production means less ethanol production. And that means less CO2. Because apparently that's where around half of our CO2 comes from. God damn it. We didn't think this through. Unintended yeah. consequences. I've been driving around the block for hours just trying to get the <laughs> beer production back up. Yeah. Hey, put your <laughs> mouth around this tailpipe. Get some of that CO2. Honey! <laughs> uh, yeah, so 34 of the 45 U.S. ethanol plants that sell their CO2 byproduct have either stopped production or scaled back. And because of the lack of supply, CO2 suppliers are now charging around 25% more for it. Now, this affects beer, soda, sparkling water, and Ugh. even, I guess, the meat industry, which uses CO2 in processing, packaging, preservation, and shipment. Mm -hmm. It's bad, folks. It's real get, bad. Get in your car and drive to save the beer industry. Beer and sparkling water. The two things that I've been like, you know what? This is fine. I can get through this. Yeah. I'll, I've got my stuff. A year? Yeah, I'll do a year. I got my beer and my Wait, bubbly. No. <laughs> there was time. Yeah. Now, to be clear, a lot of breweries, uh, in an effort to be more sustainable, started making their own CO2 years ago. It's actually pretty easy for them to be self-sustainable that home way. Home brewing, uh, you can do it without the need of uh, commercialized yeah. CO2. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these breweries don't seem too worried. Um, but, I mean, how long can we keep this up? Before the meat industry kicks the door down yeah. to ask them for that CO2. All of our beverages may soon be flat if we don't reopen this economy. <laughs> Liberate the United States. Well, so Liberate yeah, Michigan. The, Liberate Texas. Uh, Liberate the, Louisiana. The uh, problem with this is because it is also used by specifically the meat industry. Obviously, they're going to be uh, using that, directing it more towards that for sustainable food mm -hmm. instead of putting it in like beer and sparkling water and soda. So that's also the reason that it's going to get cut down a lot faster. So uh, next big thing, we've been warning you guys. First, it was uh, 
what was it, bidets, mm -hmm. uh, something else. Uh, sorry, I, my, I, my brain doesn't work in days or shows anymore. Uh, but the next big thing, you're going to have to buy up all those home brewing kits. Yeah. Get on ur urbanoutfitters.com, get the, the junior kit. We're going to all have to start brewing. There's a spider in that corner, and I'm going to kill it after this is done. I don't even see it. Anyways, uh, anyway, it, of course, it's probably better to be alive and drinking flat beer than dead and drinking no beer at all, unless they have a huge keg parties in heaven. And They don't. Okay. Uh, but a whole lot of people in this very dumb country, they really, really want things to go back to normal right fucking now, despite the virus not having slowed down nearly enough to justify it. Big crowds of armed protesters standing way too close to each other. They broke out uh, across the country over the past week with people demanding to be allowed to go back to work and do stuff like get a haircut and comparing shelter in place orders to Nazism. Cool. In some states, governors are going ahead and just deciding that enough is enough. Open up this economy. Yeah. I don't care if someone has to die. I'm getting my haircut. Some people need to die for us to live. They don't let, they're not letting me buy my fertilizer. Do you see like the uh, analysis on TikTok of that lady's uh, like uh, roots not being dyed? Like, like they, what's going their on shelter here? in place thing was like two weeks ago. Yeah. There's no way your roots look that bad after just two weeks. Yes. You, you just want an excuse to leave the house. Yes. Anyways, there's, of course, uh, Florida. Florida and their governor, Ron DeSantis. We've talked about them Florida a lot. Florida man, Ron DeSantis. Yeah, the ultimate Florida man. Last week, uh, DeSantis gave the WWE the green light to keep taping shows. He reopened some of Florida's beaches. Uh, this week, he announced a coalition with Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. A real dream team of states to coordinate the reopening of their states in the next couple weeks. Coincidentally, all the states that have uh, given the least amount of a shit about this problem. Uh, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, who we also believe is in a secret competition with Ron DeSantis to see who can get more people killed. Uh, he announced on Monday that starting up this Friday, uh, gyms, barbershops, tattoo parlors, bowling alleys, and other businesses, they can get right back to business. I like how specifically uh, all of those are the most close contact yeah. things that you could get. Yeah. Like a bowling alley. I mean, okay, maybe bring your own ball, but who does that? Well, I'm like, uh, barbershops in particular. D like, tattoo just, parlors. Yeah, bar yeah just For close hours. Contact. Yeah, um, not content with that. He also said that uh, next Monday, theaters and restaurants can reopen with social distancing, you know, observed, mm. which they won't be. Um, neither Florida nor Georgia... Uh, <laughs> We're able to even make it a full month with shelter in place. No, they made it about two weeks. Abandoning the whole thing. Uh, did you see the update from the press conference today before you came in? No. Where Trump was like, I absolutely do not uh, endorse Governor Kemp's actions to reopen the state. Well, yeah. Even <laughs> Trump is like, this is, oh, is going to look real bad for me. When, yeah. No, <laughs> so he's like, hey, we should, all, we should probably do this, right? And then they do it. And he's like, I never said. And in fact, I said they shouldn't do it. Yeah. When I said liberate. Yeah. You know, that could have meant anything. Yeah, this man is, if there's one thing he's good at, it's absolving himself of guilt. He's good at politics. Like, Tr sure. Donald Trump is good at politics. Yeah. In an evil way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's also Texas, where Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who last month said that grandparents across the country would be very happy to risk their lives and maybe even die if it means saving the national economy. Uh, this week, he reopened state parks and listed restrictions on elective surgeries. And starting on Friday, retail stores will be allowed to offer to-go services. On Monday, he says he'll make more announcements on businesses that can open back up. Why? Quote, there are more important things than living. <laughs> And that's saving this country for my children and grandchildren and saving this country for all of us. I don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. But man, we got to take some risks and get back in the game and get this country back up and running. And First it has all, to happen right now. There are people that want to die. Uh, second of all, uh, th when Boris Johnson got it, it was like, man, you don't really want someone to die but you kind of want him to suffer a little bit to see yeah. how serious this is. It was is. ironic. Yes. Because he had downplayed it. I, we could, as a country, use a little bit of this irony right now for our leaders. Yeah. yeah. Not saying anything at all. I'm just no. saying. Parody. Yes. That was parody. Yeah. Now, of course, most actual epidemiologists, they say that the infection rate is almost certainly going to rapidly spike in all of those places as soon as people stop social distancing. Because, uh, yeah, it's way too soon. Yeah. If you look at any, even the most basic charts of this, you're like, oh, yeah, right now? No. Bad time. No. I don't know, maybe two weeks, a month from now? Right now? No. Uh, but you know what? For, for the sake of argument, when would be the right time? 
Well, the White House of all places, they released reopening guidelines last Thursday that experts seem to think are pretty okay, even though they are completely optional and non-binding. They're just like, hey, here's our thing. Yeah. Now, the first step is for states to have a downward trajectory of new cases and positive tests within a 14-day period and the capacity to treat all patients. So, line go down. That's when we can start talking. Oh, uh, oops, we ran out of tests. Yeah. Look at our line going down. Yeah. Can you imagine? There, are, Yeah, there's some ways around this. Um, but yeah, if the line go down for, for two weeks, uh, then people are allowed out of their homes. Workers can return to their jobs in phases. Gyms, parks, and large venues can open up, but with strict social distancing and sanitation. Sure. That's step one. Yeah, if the downtrend continues for another two weeks, then in phase two, non-essential travel can resume, schools can reopen, and bars can reopen with Occupancy, occupancy limits, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, I, I'm, I love being safe, and I am in for the long haul, but going out to a bar, I just kind of miss it. Just turn your apartment into a bar. Well, we do every night when we play poker on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, it, and if criteria is met a third time, everything can go basically back to normal, but with more concern for sanitation than before, which is a, a good result of this. People you being would more think clean. people would learn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's more to it than what we just listed, and in general, they're just pretty good guidelines. Problem is, as some experts have pointed out, first off, testing capacity in this country still isn't anywhere near what it needs to be to have any real handle on whether infection rates are actually actually lowering. And secondly, a two-week window of a downward trend may be too short since the virus can take around that long to show symptoms. Uh, there also aren't any protocols for what to do if cases spike again during any of the phases. Uh, Knowing America, they people will not want to go back into this. No, so, we did that already. Yeah, <laughs> we tried. It didn't work, but we did it. We gave it a good old shot. Mm -hmm. But uh, but again, these are just guidelines, and states are under no obligation to follow them at all. Yeah, and and clearly this was written like Donald Trump had no part in writing this, and I don't think even like his just staff did. Thumbs up. Yeah, whatever you guys think is good. Yeah, I guess. like but, this is all way too like logical. It's uh, yeah. After his statements today about Brian Kemp, I would not be surprised if by the end of the week, Kemp is like, actually, uh, we're going to pull back just a little bit. We, we yeah. got a little ahead of ourselves. Well, like, just, just boot licking all the way down. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he's actually tire licking. He's licking the tires from underneath the bus that yeah. he's been thrown beneath. So, yeah, pretty decent guidelines from the White House, yeah. surprisingly. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization, they also issued their own guidelines for you mean returning the China home. World Health Organization? The, yeah, the China <laughs> Health Organization. Yeah. Uh, so their guideline has like six criteria for reopening. Uh, number one, transmission is controlled to the point where it's just sporadic cases and clusters of cases that can all be tracked. So we haven't done that. Uh, number two, basically be able to test anyone showing symptoms and have results within 24 hours. And nope. Number three, minimize risk in high vulnerability settings like hospitals and care homes. In other words, have enough PPE for healthcare workers. Nope. Uh, number four, establish preventative measures at workplaces so people aren't coming into work sick or spreading it to their coworkers. Nope. And five, be able to detect and track imported cases. Nope. And six, everyone would be basically just having to stay vigilant about this for a very long time, possibly the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, these are good guidelines. Yeah, sure. And because of our low testing capacity, shortage of PPE, expensive healthcare system, lack of social safety net, and just generally stupid anti-intellectual attitude, uh, we don't really meet any of this criteria. None of it. None of it. And well, this country probably shouldn't be reopening right now. And i got to say it again. I understand. I, I, it, it, I try very hard to put myself in the shoes of, of someone who's like being decimated economically. Yeah. And it sucks. I know that it sucks so bad. But the other side of it is actually just fucking dying or killing your family. Yeah. So it's, it's very tough. And I, I, there are going to be concessions along the way, especially if you live in the states that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. So you should do, the people you should, you should be mad at the government for not like compared to. Any other fucking country. Just look at, like, South Korea, for example. Like, the the government has to be able to create the conditions for reopening to happen. Yeah. And it, it's kind of shocking how poorly the U.S. government... It's, like, almost fucking May. And not enough tests, yeah. not enough PPE. Like, we're in, like, kind of the same position we were, like, a month and a half because ago. Because nothing it's really happened insane. on any, like, set schedule or with any set actual guidelines that were nationwide. Yeah. It doesn't really matter if no one else is doing it. Do you see the fucking interview with the mayor of Las Vegas? Oh, my God. That bitch is crazy. She's insane. 
She's like, yes, yeah, so open up the casinos. And, and also, she was like, we, I'll, I'll make Las Vegas a, a, a test case. We'll, we'll be the, uh, the... We'll be the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, and it's funny, like, places like Vegas and then, like, it's like all the beach towns in, like, Georgia and Florida, they all think that as soon as they reopen, the tourists are going to come right back in. I'm like, <laughs> tourism is not happening again for a while. Like, uh, shit is not coming back to where it was for at least a year. Maybe I don't think to years. where it was, but there are going to be people who are traveling to beaches to be like, finally. But it's nev- It's not going to be. It. Like, no. these people are going to be losing money regardless. And when they're back in business, guess what? Now you're not unemployed. You can't collect benefits because... Yeah, you're you, just making no, no money and probably just yeah. going to get fired outright. Yes. Again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the PPE stuff, I mean, the, the federal government... They're actively preventing state and local governments from acquiring the N95 masks they need. Yeah. States are ordering it, and then fucking FEMA, FEMA takes it. They're like, uh, uh, I don't know. Looks like you're uh, hoarding medical supplies. We're going to go take that and put it in our stockpile. And then the states are like, no, it's ours. It's coming. We need it in our hospitals. And they're like, ah, well, it's in stockpile. If you want some from the stockpile, which has like a million fucking masks, just send in a form. And then they never send them a mask because it's all up to like discretion of the organization. Was it the, the organization. Vir- Virginia governor who where, where Trump was like, yeah, everyone need, needs to get their own test. So he's like, all right, cool, I got my own test. And Trump was like, no, not like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, it's almost May. We're not even at a point where a lot of healthcare workers can even do their job without being at pretty serious risk of infection. Uh, experts say that there needs to be between 4 million and 30 million tests done per week before we can talk about reopening. The number is currently at just like 1 million. So not even close there. And then the biggest problem, of course, is just the amount of people in this stupid fucking country who literally do not believe in any of the science around this and will not be paying any mind to, like, social distancing the second that they're allowed back out. It's going to be right back to normal. It's very frustrating. Uh, anyways, we've got Phil Larigo coming up next with his weekly quarantine segment. But uh, first, let's get to the sponsors this week, uh, starting with Stitch Fix. Hey, wouldn't it be great if every clothing store you shopped had only your size, the styles that you like, and the price you want? And also, you wouldn't have to actually go out to the store and put yourself at risk? Yeah. Well, Stitch Fix is a company focused on making all of that happen. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling company that makes getting the clothes that you love effortless. It's a completely different way to shop that's all about you every time. And to get started, you can go to stitchfix.com slash newsday. You set up your profile, and they'll deliver great looks personalized just for you and your colors, styles, and budget. Because when this is all over, you're going to want to walk out there peacocking, baby, showing everyone the type of person you are. I've changed. Quarantine changed. You're going to want to have your back-to-reality outfit Mm -hmm. picked out. It's like back to school when you were a kid. You want to look your best. You want the nice backpack. Mm -hmm. So you pay $20 for a styling fee for each fix, but that $20 is credited towards anything you keep. You schedule at any time. There's no subscription required. Plus, shipping, returns, and exchanges are easy and free. Stitch Fix does the hard work for you, making great style effortless for everybody, including men, women, and kids. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash newsday. You'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash newsday for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash newsday. This episode is also sponsored Sponsored by Manscaped, the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming. You bored in the house? Why not play with your balls? Make Manscaping part of your routine. Uh, Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0. Precision engineered tools for your family jewels. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the new improved Lawnmower 3.0. It's a waterproof, cordless body. It's going to give you a good trim. And they also have a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. This third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. Inside the perfect package you'll also find the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're probably sitting on the couch right now with your hand on your balls anyway. Might as well keep them smooth (laughs) as eggs and smelling fresh. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the perfect package and get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower delivered to your door every three months making sure your trimmer always stays fresh and clean. For a limited time, subscribers get not one, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, worth $39, and the patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs. If the perfect package is for you, get it now and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TECHNEWSDAY, all one word, at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TECHNEWSDAY at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com, code tech newsday. Make playing with your balls the best part of your day if it's not already. Yeah, protect your balls. Yeah. 
Thanks, Manscaped. Clean them up, because when the doctors have to drain the virus out, yeah. they're yeah. going to need some easy access. Treat your balls right, and your balls might treat you right. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Phil, what have you got for us today? Hey, I don't know if you noticed, but we're under attack by a deadly virus. But you know who else is coming for us? We are. Humans. We're here to capitalize on this worldwide panic with some new scams, baby. Televangelists peddling fake virus cures, that's old news. I want something new, like the 18 million daily malware and phishing emails related to the pandemic. And this Greatest Hits scam album has all your favorites. Tricking users into downloading malware, impersonating government organizations, pretending to have information about government stimulus payments, and my favorite, phishing attempts aimed at people who work remotely. Look, there's no need to like fully freak out. The Verge reports that Google says it's artificial intelligence power protections filter such threats and that it blocks more than 99% of spam, phishing, and malware from reaching users using AI and other techniques. So humans are employing AI to spot scams that different humans are unleashing on like a different set of humans. I didn't realize we're watching Inception, but like, cool, like what else is going on? Oh, you ever uh, open up one of the grocery store apps and uh, you spend like a half hour getting like the perfect cart of like all the perfect food and you go to check out and you get punched in the face with this message? All the shoppers are busy. Don't worry, it's getting worse because people are making bots to snatch up them delivery spots. A data scientist who released a delivery slot Chrome extension told Vice, I designed the bot for those who find it extremely inconvenient in these times to step out or find it not safe for themselves to be outside. It is my contribution to help flatten the curve. I really hope this will reduce the number of people going out. So pretty much everyone's having trouble finding a delivery slot. So a bot that stands in line for you is supposed to prevent people from actually going to the store. It doesn't make slots. It just gobbles them up. And like grandma can't physically go to the store. So she's going to fire up the Chrome web store, install your bot and put her order in. Got it. Let's stay on grocery stores for a sec because Whole Foods is really, really thinking about their employees in these trying times. They're thinking that they really would like it if employees didn't unionize and Whole Foods is employing a heat map to track unionization risk factors. What are some of the store risks they track? Store risk metrics include average store compensation, average total store sales, and a diversity index that represents the racial and ethnic diversity of every store. Stores at higher risk of unionizing have lower diversity and lower employee compensation. Ah, weird, these stores where you pay people less, they want to unionize. Why would Whole Foods want to prevent unions? Ah, because they're owned by Amazon, who are notoriously anti-union. Remember this anti-union video distributed by Amazon in 2018? I don't remember, but here's a quote from that video. We do not believe unions are in the best interest of our customers, our shareholders, or most importantly, our associates. Our business model is built upon speed, innovation, and customer obsession, things that are generally not associated with union. When we lose sight of those critical focus areas, we jeopardize everyone's job security, yours, mine, and the associates. Yeah, I just think these motherfuckers like money and don't want to pay union workers. Call it a hunch since Amazon fired warehouse worker Chris Smalls the same day he organized protests for better protective measures. And then in a leaked memo, Amazon General Counsel David Sapowski said of fired warehouse worker Chris Smalls, he's not smart or articulate. So look, you got the random scummy scammers sending you phishing emails. You got the big shiny corporations making sure you don't get a raise or unionize and what? Oh man, they're using bots to buy up all the switches and jack up the prices. Okay. All right, now I get it. This thing sucks. I thought it was just a new forever sleepover where I don't do shit and eat snacks all day, but they're buying up all the switches. You people are animals. Uh, for real, though, there's a tons of scams out there. So uh, if you're having trouble navigating, uh, there's a link below to the FC FTC scam resources or maybe forward this one to your parents. So for once, you can be the one who gets to send it along an article that you know damn well the other person's not going to click, you know? Bye. Thanks, Bill. You have a cute dog that doesn't have any teeth. Anyways, in some other quick bites or quippies. I don't want to say that. We might get in trouble. Mm. Anyways, uh, here's some news tidbits. Tit titty bits. Uh, Tony Spell, the Louisiana pastor we've talked about a few times recently because he kept holding large gatherings at his church despite being repeatedly told not, not to do that, uh, including a 1,200-person service on Easter. He has now asked his uh, congregants to go ahead and sign that $1,200 stimulus check Right over to him. 
you know, since the whole lockdown thing is really cut into the usual tithing income. That's yeah, he's suffering. Pastor Tony is suffering. Please send him that check. Of course, Spells Church was perfectly eligible for its own stimulus via payroll protection program, which we talked about on yesterday's episode. Mm-hmm. But as he says, we don't want the government to give us a dime. We are happy to provide for ourselves. Never will our federal or state government put one penny into our church because the second they do, they control us. So we refuse go- government money, but you... We tax the common man. You just got some government money, so give me your government money. But yeah. we don't take government money. Government money laundering. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Fucking Christ. In other news, it's sure starting to seem like hydroxychloroquine is not the miracle cure that some people, including our president, thought it was. Uh, here's from the Associated Press. Researchers analyzed medical records of 368 male veterans hospitalized with confirmed coronavirus infection at Veterans Health Administration medical centers who died or were discharged by April 11th. About 28% who were given hydroxychloroquine plus usual care died versus 11% of those getting routine care alone. Oh, no. So, well, at least we're t- uh, still testing on our veterans. Yeah. So you, they were more likely to die if they, they, got, did have if they got the hydroxychloroquine as opposed to not. And who could forget the man sign. who ate the hydroxychloroquine meant for the Fish? aquarium? Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, so they've all stopped talking about it now. Yeah. They really wish that you would forget that they ever brought it up. Yeah. Uh, this, the, this re- these researchers, they also found that uh, it made no difference at all in the need for a breathing tube. And they also suspect that hydroxychloroquine may, in fact, damage the organs. So You're going to need those organs, folks. Yeah. Yeah, meanwhile, people who actually need that drug for stuff like lupus that it's actually been proven to work for, they're still having a hard time getting it, thanks to doctors like San Diego physician Jennings Staley, who was arrested last week for selling $4,000 COVID-19 treatment packs to anyone that was willing to pay. Dr. Staley's main racket is usually stuff like Botox, tattoo removal, and oxygen therapy, but he seemed very confident in this COVID-19 package, telling an undercover FBI agent that it cures the disease. Now, that same agent at one point asked him, if I'm hearing you right, if I, be, if I buy these kits from you, then that's going to pretty much guarantee that neither my kids, my dad, my wife, any of us get sick. And if we are, it's going to cure us, right? To which Sally replied, guaranteed. He also offered to sell that agent some Viagra and Xanax. Yeah. A one-stop shop. So, I, I mean... Contactless. It, it is cool that the FBI is apparently on the ball with, like, they're going to kick down the, the door of InfoWars. And that, what's the, what's the guy that was selling silver tablets? Jim Backer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jim, Pastor Jim Backer update. I don't know if this is true, but he claims that all the credit card companies <laughs> have uh, cut off his service. Good. So uh, now they, they, need, they need your donations right now, and they need it via check in the mail. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers. You hate to see it. Mm. Anyways, that's it for this week's Tech News Day episode. We got more stuff coming. No. In this week's pipeline, be sure to, uh, if you missed our 420 stream. Check that out. Check that out. I don't think it's that interesting, but. Uh, yeah, it's just us being high. Us being boring and high. Yeah, yeah. who would have thought watching a bunch of people high would be boring. Yeah. And our most recent episode uh, where we. Uh, Kim Jong is uh, ill. Kim Jong may or may not be ill. We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed, though. Check those out. We'll see you soon. Bye.